Thanks UPDF for sponsoring this video. As a long-time Mac user who works with it daily, I've always aimed to optimize and speed up my macOS experience. There are various settings and apps that fill some software gaps and others that allow me to fully utilize this device. I use it both as a desktop in my studio or on the go to harness its incredible power. I'm not a supporter of those who always seek out third-party apps and complex combinations of programs that ultimately just overcomplicate the work. Whenever possible, I prefer to use system apps because they are often simple, well integrated and do exactly what they promise without adding features that aren't generally unnecessary in daily use. However, there are times when third-party apps offer such a significant added value and this is the case with Arc. I've been using it on both Mac and iPhone for three months now and after years of using Safari, I finally decided to make the switch. I had been thinking about it for a while, but a bit of laziness and mental challenge of adapting to a new workflow had kept me from making the change. If you're worried about losing your bookmarks, importing them from Safari to Arc is actually very straightforward. The only thing I haven't fully adjusted to yet is the management of bookmarks, which is different from the traditional browsers. Not only is the design and animation of Arc very polished, with so many updates, including recent automatic updates, but the overall user experience is clearly superior. One feature I find simply amazing is the automatic tab organization by category. If you ever find yourself with 100 tabs open while in the middle of your work, you can just click the tidy button and it will automatically reorganize everything into categories. Fantastic. Plus, all videos can be played in picture-in-picture -picture mode, which is incredibly convenient for YouTube, for example, and they can be resized and moved freely on the screen. There are also numerous details and features that make a difference in daily use, such as automatic file renaming into a more readable format, instant summaries when hovering over a link, or the classic Ctrl F, which here not only allows you to search for a word on site, but also to ask an AI about what you see. There are many other features that collectively make Arc significantly better than Safari, even if it slightly sacrifices device integration. A recent addition exclusive to Mac is the ChatGPT app. What changed from the web version? Actually very little, or almost nothing. However, downloading the app has significantly speed up my searches. By pressing option plus space, you instantly get a spotlight-like window with ChatGPT. This way, for example, you can capture a screenshot to ask ChatGPT a question about what you are seeing on your PC. Or even better, by creating a shortcut, I've managed to preemptively use a feature of Apple intelligence that will be available in the coming months. In the settings for iPhone, Mac and iPad, you can set up super handy keyboard shortcuts which I used to use for entering recurring data with copy and paste. As an Italian writing mostly in English, for example, I set up the shortcut fix grammar and spelling. This means that whenever I type fix, the text will be replaced with a prompt I use daily to correct any grammar or spelling errors in the text. By combining ChatGPT shortcuts with these abbreviations, you can create prompts in just a few seconds and save a lot of time. So far, the standout feature of these apps is the AI, which I believe will become increasingly important when integrating the, into the daily tasks we perform. One common task we face every day is dealing with PDFs. Until now, I've always used the system apps, which are extremely limited. For this reason, I've completely switched to UPDF, an AI-powered PDF editor that allows you to view, annotate, edit, convert, OCR, sign, protect, organize, translate, chat, and summarize PDFs across Mac, iPad, iPhone, PC, and Android. The OCR features are particularly impressive since I handle PDFs daily for work like contracts or briefs, and for university studies, I couldn't have made a better choice. You know how much I care about minimalist design and visual clarity, and here they have done an excellent job on both Mac and iOS devices. Of course, you can make standard edits like highlighting and formatting text, adding text boxes and callouts, and signing digitally. They offer text recognition for scanned documents, images, and images within documents. 
DCI Power and Dossier turns scanned PDFs or documents into editable files easily, but the real game changer for me is the AI features. It's like having a chat GPT inside your PDF. This means you can ask any question related to the document's content. There are quick preset options for summarizing, explaining or translating selected text and more. The incredible part is being able to literally chat with a bot within the document, asking specific questions about it. I use it for quickly recalling information or even exploring topics directly within the document, modifying it and adding notes. It's also great for understanding work briefs by asking specific questions and requesting bullet point simplifications. So if you're interested, you can try the free version or opting for the premium features, which I honestly suggest if you work a lot with PDFs. There's the first link in the description if you want to get a little discount. When I need to record my Mac screen, like in this video, I always rely on another software I recently discovered called Screen Studio. I absolutely love tools that are so well designed. It's simply the best tool I've ever seen for screen recording. It might seem odd because in the end it's just screen recording, but there are a number of details that completely transform the experience. With Screen Studio, you only need to click record and the software will automatically take care of the rest. After recording, you can customize a series of settings to automatically adapt the video to different formats, add custom backgrounds, modify the cursor and other aesthetic features. But the truly amazing feature is the super smooth automatic zooms. Depending on what happens and what you click on the screen, the software will automatically apply standing zoom, creating much more dynamic and professional video. All of this can then be edited in a timeline that is always present in the program. When I see software of this caliber, my eyes light up. Now, let's move on to some of the settings I always adjust when I buy a new Mac. First of all, if you use your Mac on the go, you need to change these settings. First, make sure to enable tap to click. I don't know why, but by default, you have to physically click the trackpad, which is quite slow and particularly inconvenient for dragging files. The game changer here is to search for trackpad in the search bar and set the dragging style to free finger drag. Personally, I've always disliked how dragging files and objects works on the trackpad. With this setting, you simply move the cursor over a file, drag it using three fingers on the trackpad and release when you want to stop. It's faster and more convenient. Regarding mission control, I've disabled the automatic reorganization of windows. I find it quite annoying, especially since we usually decide on a specific order and having applications constantly move around is rather frustrating. For my screensaver, I'm using a super minimal clock from Padbury. It's fairly well known, but it's essential and useful. I've also modified some finder settings to achieve a cleaner view and keep important info readily accessible. Since I have the premium iCloud plan, I've added instant links to some folders I use for editing in the sidebar. I've also installed Google drive so that it appears directly in the finder, making it easy to drag and drop files between my Mac and Google Drive. Additionally, a lesser known feature is the ability to customize the top bar. I've decided to keep it as clean as possible with only the essential tools I use. Share, airdrop, delete and search. In the menu bar under view, I always show the path and status bars at the bottom of the finder to keep track of where I am and to have the important info I need. Some keyboard shortcuts worth mentioning include selecting a file with the cursor and then holding down the option key to instantly duplicate that file. This is especially helpful and is available in editing software. For example, in Final Cut you can duplicate a clip by pressing option and moving the clip. Cutting and pasting file is not as straightforward as on Windows. To cut a file and pass it elsewhere you need to press Command C to copy and then Command Option V to paste it in the new location. And finally, especially on Mac, the top menu bar is crucial. This is actually a contextual menu bar that changes its information depending on what's on the screen. I have some apps and extensions installed that come in handy for keeping things always accessible. The first widget is my current calendar event, which I always keep fully displayed. This is made possible by Notion Calendar, my go-to calendar choice since I decided to rely on Notion to organize my business. Notion Calendar is the perfect companion since everything with Notion databases and building calendars. I loved Google Calendar for years and never found a good simple alternative until now. With Notion Calendar, I've essentially found a combination of Google Calendar and Notion databases, which is ideal for me. If I weren't using Notion, I'd probably still rely on Google for its simplicity. 
An essential extension for Mac users with an external monitor is amphetamine. The name is quite ironic, but it prevents your Mac from going to sleep essentially keeping it awake. Jokes aside, if the Mac isn't charging, it's not possible to close it without it going into standby. Amphetamine allows you to start a session where the Mac won't enter standby mode, so you can close it normally without needing to keep it plugged in. This feature seemed quite obvious to me coming from Windows, but it's not available by default on macOS. I use CopyClip to keep track of everything I've copied, so I always have a history of my clipboard. There are some premium alternatives like Paste, but I don't find them worth the cost at the moment. CopyClip is a simple, effective and free alternative that does exactly what it needs to do. Rectangle is the best extension for managing windows on your desktop. You can easily drag a window to the side to resize it or use keyboard shortcuts. My favorites are instantly centering a window or making it full size without creating a new desktop. Finally, use Dev's Watch, which is just a color picker. It's useful for graphic projects or when I need the hexadecimal code of a color I see online. So these were my essential tools and tips I always had on a Mac. I'm always on the lookout for new tools and stuff that can improve my productivity. So if you have suggestions, I will be more than happy to discuss with you in the comments. And as always, wishing you the best. See you soon.